guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor with the Raptor Code Orange Appearance Package. And a big thanks to Chris and the rest of the management and staff here at Auto Nation Ford in Brooksville, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Brooksville, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And as for Chris. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Bronco has been Ford's body on frame off road capable SUV since 1966, lasting 29 years through five generations before a 25 year hiatus and brought back in 2021 for its sixth generation. For 2022, Ford released their top performance Bronco Raptor that you see here, featuring a more powerful 418 horsepower, 440 pound foot of torque, 3 liter twin turbo V6, 37 inch tires, too. Haas 4.0 suspension with Fox shocks, sway bars in the front and rear, as well as front and rear lockers. We get seven go modes also among many other off-road and premium goodies. For 2024, the Bronco Raptor adds an optional code orange package that we have here, giving us gray and orange graphics throughout with orange tow hooks, hood graphics, and wheel accents as well. It's a $2,500 package on a $91,000 base price. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right and so, as I mentioned, this is a top performance Bronco, not only available today, but ever released to the public. This thing is aggressive. Massive 37 inch wheels, which we'll check out in one second. And to fit those 37 inch wheels, we got these super aggressive fender flares. We get three front marker lights too, to indicate the extra width, just like in the Raptor pickup truck, forward facing camera helping us out with 360. Orange tow hooks as part of that code orange appearance package. Front parking sensing, fog lights, LED headlamps with a high and low beam with an LED daytime running light. Hopefully you can pick up the orange and gray hood graphics that we get here in this code orange package with a really aggressive hood that we get for the Raptor heat extractors as well as says Raptor in the corner. We also have these tow hooks, max load 150 pounds, heat extractors over here in the corner, the wheel and tire setup. This is probably the reason you're gonna go with a Bronco Raptor are these massive 17 inch rim, six lug pattern, wrapped in BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2 37 inch tires. Dimensions being 37, 12 and a half by 17. With the orange outlines for this orange graphic appearance package, we get the running boards helping us step inside this pretty seriously lifted four-door SUV. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger. Removable roof, we're not gonna be demonstrating that throughout this review. It's pretty self-explanatory, there's latches all throughout. Same thing with the removal doors, not gonna be demonstrating that in this review, but it's pretty straightforward if you do end up purchasing this vehicle. You see your accessory ready little side area for this fender flare. Same rear wheel and tire setup, the only difference is a smaller brake caliper. Hopefully you can pick up the Raptor 4.0 Fox suspension setup. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. Really, really clean, at least while brand new. We'll take a step back. Hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile of this massive, menacing 2024 Bronco Raptor with the code orange appearance package. We get more of that orange and gray graphics. Raptor badge in the side. The gas cap is not pushed open, but if there's easy fill. I'd recommend sticking to premium fuel, although they say 87 plus is fine. You see the multiple generations of the Bronco up top as well. Before we check out the rear end style, let's hop over to the side, get a quick look at the window sticker and see all the features we have available on this 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor. With a three liter EcoBoost V6 engine, 10 speed auto, shadow black exterior, Onyx vinyl seats. I'm not sure what those repair guys are doing back there, but there we go. Hopefully you guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. It comes relatively loaded, 2,500 bucks for that code orange package. 190 for the engine block heater, 1725 for the interior carbon fiber pack, 210 for the off-road assistance kit, 4600 bucks in total options, 1895 for the destination charge, totaling us out at 96,550 bucks. Definitely getting up there in price. You guys can let me know in the comment section throughout this review if you think this SUV has the value per dollar. We have full LED taillights, turn signals, and reverse light, a massive spare tire, taking up just about the entire trunk area, rear tow hooks, rear parking sensing, and we get our exhaust tip in the lower left corner. It's a dual tip, but just a single outlet. Hopefully you get a good look at the Raptor specific differential too, and solid rear axle. We get a fully independent front suspension though, unlike the Jeep Wrangler, so it'll be interesting to see how the two compete off-road. 
We mentioned the dual exhaust tips or just dual tips with a single exhaust. And speaking of it, let's fire up this three liter twin turbo V6 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the three liter twin turbo V6 sold by Ford for the 2024 Bronco Raptor. And it sounds pretty good with this active exhaust making a lot of power at 418 horsepower, 440 pound feet of torque, made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission, enough to get this 5,700 pound off road SUV to 16 around six seconds. So, considering the weight of this vehicle, Definitely a respectable time, but I kind of wish they lowered the overall weight at least a little bit just so it felt a little bit quicker and could potentially keep up with vehicles or competition like the Wrangler 392, which quite honestly blows the absolute doors off of this thing. But when it comes to looks, I think this Bronco Raptor looks a lot, a lot more badass than that 392 Wrangler. I mean, it's close, but I think the Bronco Raptor definitely takes the cake when it comes to overall aggressive styling. As far as interior, luxury, and features, Let's take a step inside and see if the value that we get is worth the price tag. So the doors are removable, so don't get too nitpicky and complaining about the quality of them. We get the marine grade vinyl up top to keep the upper part of the door panel nice and gushy soft. Marine grade vinyl for the bottom part also as an armrest, little grab handle area and a map pocket. Lock and unlock, that's the only electrical control on this door panel. Everything else is done through the actual interior. The mirrors are not attached to the door, so when you remove the door, you can keep your mirrors. And we get blind spot monitoring on the glass. Hopefully, you can pick it up on camera. We get a Ford Performance nameplate as we step inside. Running boards, they're a little bit high up, which makes them a little bit useless as running boards. But when it comes to actual ground clearance, they don't limit you as a lower running board would. You guys can see all the information that you have on the stickers. The seats are Raptor specific marine grade vinyl, very supportive and very comfortable. Gushy soft in the middle and nice and supportive on the sides. One area where I need to knock forward is we don't have any electrical adjustments on these seats. You got to recline manually, drop lift manually, lumbar is manual and the slide function all manual at 91,000 bucks for the base price, 100 grand after the options and features and tax. We gotta have electric adjustments for the seats. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Anyway, we'll take a step inside and really see what we got. So from the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But overall, guys, the interior here is really premium. The steering wheel is fat, red contrast stitching, fat 10 and two, perfect nine and three, and it's a thick wheel. Carbon fiber accents for the frame. The Bronco horn area is rubberized. The horn itself, really loud and aggressive. People will definitely be getting out of your way. The window controls are right here. We have four window auto one touch. We'll check and see if we get dual panes. No dual panes, but it's a very thick single pane of glass. Should limit the wind noise nicely. The controls in the steering wheel, we have radar cruise control on the left side, the adjustments on the left, lane keep assist and volume control. We have our steering feel adjustment. We can adjust between normal, comfort and sport. We'll see what the differences are. We have our My Mode settings. You can press R again to enter the My Mode, which of course will be adjusted by the potential owner of this vehicle. You can adjust the suspension between normal, sport, and off-road for the dampers and the exhaust between normal, sport, and Baja. Quiet mode as well. We'll start the review off in quiet, try out Baja, and just see what the differences are. On the right side, you can hang up and answer your phone calls, voice commands, you can skip your songs, and adjust this infotainment cluster. Right now we're looking at Raptor status. You can go down to configure my view. We can go into the actual main menu between my view, trip and fuel, Raptor information, navigation, phone, audio, and settings. My personal favorite screen to look at at all times would probably be Raptor information, where you can see between Raptor status, off-road status, my gauges, measurements, tire pressure, pitch and roll, power distribution, and driver assistance. My personal favorite would be power distribution, so we'll leave it there. The TAC goes to about 6,200 RPM, speedometer goes to 140. Temperature outside in the left corner, mileage on the right, coolant temperature, oil temperature, transmission temperature, and fuel level up top. The paddle shifters are aluminum. We get auto headlamps, no auto high beams, or auto rain sensing wipers. At this price point, auto rain sensing wipers would be appreciated. We get our fog lamps too, 
zone lights, interior brightness, electronic parking brake, hood latch release, and hopefully get a good look at the pedals. The dashboard is all stitch material in marine grade vinyl. We get our adjustable sway bars and locking front and rear differential with our roll control or trail turn assist, which is only available in four wheel drive low or four wheel drive high. We have our traction control you can disable, hazards. We access some additional charge ports. We have a USB A and USB C port with additional an additional USB A and C port down below and wireless phone charging kit. You get a screwed in for performance little Bronco grill decal for the center area. The gear slider controls the 10 speed automatic transmission. Backup camera, very high resolution. We get guidance lines and trajectory with and over the top 360. Definitely helping us out off road, putting it into drive or park. We return right back to the previous screen. Volume and tune dial, you can turn off the engine start stop. Turn off the parking sensors, you can access your camera at all times. You can skip your songs, pause and play down below. Tune right next to it. Dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats, heated steering wheel, but no ventilated seats. At this price point forward, we gotta have ventilated seats in this car. The gear selector has the carbon fiber contrast. We have carbon fiber contrast all throughout this interior. It's part of that $1,700 optional package. We also have an American flag decal right here down below we pick it up on camera and seven goat modes the goat modes go from normal sport tow haul slippery off-road baja and rock crawl all nice and configurable features but for rock crawl it automatically shifts you into four-wheel drive low so we're definitely not going to be testing that out we will start the review off in normal trout sport and just see what the differences are likely going to leave it in two-wheel drive high Unless the wheel spins unbearable, then we'll try it out in four wheel drive auto just to save the tire tread on this car. Two cup holders, you'll fit 24 ounce bottles, four auto one touch windows, four way adjustable mirrors, marine grade vinyl with stitching for the armrest. It says Raptor on it. The storage space is decent. Oops, there we go. We can fit probably four, maybe five one liter bottles of soda in there with an additional 12 volt as well. The glove box is underneath this red Bronco stitched area for the airbag. You can open it up, it is damped and large. You'll fit 20 to 25 license plates in there. You'll easily fit two pairs of shoes. It's an interesting design that the airbag cover is made out of hard material. Hopefully it doesn't shoot right into your face in case of an accident, God forbid. We get a auto dimming rear view mirror. It's not frameless. Three garage home link settings, six auxiliary settings. Our interior lights are LED. Here are the latches to open up your roof. Everything going on out rear, we're not gonna demonstrate it. You guys can check out plenty of YouTube tutorials of a bunch of people, especially owners, doing it. But since it's gonna take me probably an hour to figure it out and put it back on, I'm gonna personally choose to avoid demonstrating that feature. I've learned my lesson plenty of times with Broncos and Wranglers in the past having to mess with the roofs. Anyway, we didn't check out this uh, touch screen. I'll close the door real quick. The touch screen, we have navigation to be expected at this price point. We'll check it out. We have Ford's new sync system and it is wonderful. The response is fantastic. Fantastic. Resolution is top notch. Ford has seriously improved their infotainment system in the last five years. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We can see what other features we get. Driver assistance, zone lights, towing, owner's manual, and you can record your feedback for one reason or another. My personal favorite screen would be the navigation screen, so we'll leave it there. And that's about it for the front seat of the 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor. Let's hop out back see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the material so out back we still get the marine grade vinyl up top and for the armrest cargo net for storage aluminum door handle the rear seats are really comfortable well padded marine grain vinyl with that orange contrasted seat belt and really really soft material for the butt and back area additional cargo nets behind both the front seats but taking a step inside we get the grab handle making things a little bit easier i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings now about an inch or two inches of knee room, headroom, more than enough, about two, three inches of headroom. So I'm comfortable back here. Anybody under 6'3", six, 6'4", six, should sit in the back of the Bronco with no problem. No air vents, unfortunately, to blow directly into your face at least. There is something going on under the front seat, but nothing that blows in our face at this price point. That's an expected feature. We get two window controls, charge ports, USB-A and C port, and an AC outlet, 110 volt, and 400 watt max. That's about it though guys for the back seat of this Bronco. The center cubby has two cup holders. You'll fit 24 ounce bottles, but not a lot of area to actually rest your arm. The interior lights back here are also LED. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. With more latches to open up this roof. 
Let's hop out towards the cargo space, see how much space is offered back there. And then take this 2024 Bronco Raptor out for a drive. Then I mentioned we get the Raptor logo in the lower left corner, opening up this trunk. It's hydraulically assisted. You have to open it up completely in order to open up this glass or else the trunk gets in the way, which makes it just about useless if you're in the city and have to parallel park. But in my opinion, this isn't the most city friendly vehicle anyway. So I'm sure most people that own Bronco Raptors will not be parallel parking very frequently. But the overall cargo space is solid. I'll leave a link right here, show you exactly how much there is. The floor height is obnoxiously high. At six feet tall, I got about a foot until my knee would reach the floor. So if you have older or smaller pets, there is no chance that they're hopping back here. You're gonna have to get an SUV a little bit lower to the ground. You get some cargo pockets in the corners though, making it a little bit more practical. Subwoofer for the booming audio system, additional 12 volt LED cargo light, a roll cage that says Ford Performance on it. And overall, it's just a really clean looking SUV. It's expensive, but you get what you pay for. This is one of the coolest SUVs ever sold by Ford. I also really like how Ford allows us to have this opening glass. It's a little bit gimmicky. There's no actual latch for it. It just flops around back and forth if this thing is open, but it allows for us to be able to throw kayaks through our SUV instead of having to carry a trailer, which I'm sure isn't a problem with the Bronco Raptor. I'm sure this thing will pull kayak trailer with no problem. But here with the removable glass, you don't even need a trailer. Just throw the kayaks right through. It's not quite as practical for grocery shopping because in order to open up the glass, you have to open up this hatch first so if you have a pet pack there they're going to just jump right out and run around the parking lot unlike the expedition where there's a separate latch for you to open the glass or the older explorers but it's still nice to be able to have that as an option anyway let me just demonstrate what it would look like if you were to leave the glass open so see you fold those second row seats down you can definitely throw some kayaks through there but now you're not going to be able to close the glass without opening this thing first which makes it a little bit counterintuitive but no complaints hopefully you guys can see everything that we have available on this trunk hatch and shutting it right up we can take a step back walk around this 2024 ford bronco raptor one more time with this code orange appearance package it is an aggressive looking performance suv off-road performance suv and speaking of performance let's take this 2024 ford bronco raptor out for a drive and see what it's got all right guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor with the code orange appearance package. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, the steering feels really well weighted in this car and it feels on center. We'll see if it changes up once we're at higher speed. Ride quality over the bumps. You don't not only do you not feel it you don't even realize that the bump that you're seeing is actually real because you don't even feel a hint of it being there with these insane 37 inch tires as a result though with these 37 inch tires there's a lot of extra weight in this suv i mean 5700 pounds for a midsize you have loaded expeditions that don't weigh 5700 pounds that says a lot about the off-road upgrades that this suv has taking a step out here we can lean into it about halfway. Woo! Yeah, I mean, it's still definitely very, very quick. I'm not sure if the exhaust is even on right now, the active exhaust. No, that was in quiet mode. In sport mode, definitely gets a little bit louder. You hear more of a blow off. Let's throw it into Baja mode. Ooh, it sounds really good and the brakes feel surprisingly good as well. As soon as we get the chance, we'll try out a real world turning radius and I'll catch right back with you. All right guys, real world turning radius. Make sure that guy doesn't go. It's sharp on the S. Woo! <laughs> it is a screamer. No, it's not like particularly fast, but you could blame these massive tires for that. It still feels really quick. As soon as that boost kicks in, you are taking off. I can see zero to 60 happening around six seconds. All right, guys, so trying it out with everything in sport, steering's in sport, suspension's in sport, exhaust is in Baja. Steering feels even better now. Body roll for a vehicle like this, it's actually ridiculous how limited the body roll is. Not quite sure whose music that was, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. We'll get that guy in front of us a little bit of space. Try one out off the line, off the line, on the gas, sport mode, boost. Whoo, 
yep, it gets up and goes really quickly. Another thing I'm noticing, we hold our gear in sport mode, but you can use your paddle shifters and manually go into the overdrive gear. Not sure if you can pick it up on camera, but you can hear a lot of wind noise through this hard top. The soft top definitely makes a little bit more wind noise, but this hard top is very, very loud when it comes to wind noise. At this price point, I wish they put a little bit more thought into the overall isolation. Like every gust of wind, you can hear it. But on the gas, woo! Wow, the top end. This V6, twin turbo V6, has a really strong top end. I mentioned it in the Explorer ST review that we had in this channel. That's still definitely apparent here. But wow, that wind noise. I don't know if I'd be able to deal with that every day. At 60 miles an hour, we're in the 10th gear now, turning at about 1800 RPM, which isn't too low, isn't too high, but it allows us to get over 15 MPGs in the highway. The combined MPGs here is about 15, and the highways is about 16. If the gears were a little bit shorter, we probably wouldn't even be seeing anywhere close to that. We can try out these paddles. The gear ratios are really close to each other. So it's fun to actually press the paddles multiple times. Body roll is limited. <laughs> it is a lot of fun, but unlike the other vehicles we've been reviewing on this channel, like the Super Duty F350 with the high output diesel, um, or the F150 with the 2.7, the Explorer ST with the 3.0, this, unlike those others, it feels like you're going faster than you really are. Throughout all those previous reviews, I kept saying, wow, I look down and I'm going so much faster than I think I am. And that's the opposite here. Here, I'm going slower than I think I am. It feels like I'm going 70, 80, and it looks down, and I look down and I'm just now crossing 50. But that's fun. You know what they say, it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. This isn't particularly a slow car. We got over 400 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque but it's a lot of fun running this thing to its limits. Looks like a good spot for an off the line test. Sport mode, off the line, on the gas. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a quick vehicle. The burbles sound good. The steering feels good. The body roll in this thing is so limited. I was not expecting an off-road SUV. <laughs> that torque is really good too, but I was not expecting an off-road SUV with tires this massive to be able to hit turns that quick. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is a blast to drive. <sighs> yeah, guys, we don't have to beat it up a whole lot further. Let's throw the exhaust into its quietest mode. Let's throw the suspension into normal. And let's get the steering back to comfort. We haven't tried comfort steering yet. It still feels super sporty. The steering does get lighter, but it's still sharp and direct. For a 5,700 pound SUV with 37 inch tires, the handling in this SUV is fantastic. It feels so much sporty than I imagined it to be. The brakes feel good. The transmission is responsive and snappy even when we are no longer in our aggressive modes. Back into normal mode, taking a step out here. Lean into it. Ooh. Yeah, traction control kicks in, but it still allows us to get up and go. So this is our quietest mode. We are in normal mode for the GOAT modes. We're in quiet for the exhaust, and we're in comfort for both the steering and the dampers. It's still pretty loud in here, but not because of the exhaust, not because of the road noise. It's because of the wind noise. Ford, please try figuring something out to make this cabin more isolated from the wind noise because for a 90 plus thousand dollar SUV, I cannot imagine a customer that has that kind of money stepping into this SUV, taking it over 50 miles per hour, and liking what they hear when it comes to 
wind noise. Other than that though, this is just about a perfect off-road capable SUV. It looks so badass. That engine sounds good for a six cylinder. This is one of the best sounding six cylinders on the road today. Good power, zero to 60 around six seconds. No, it's not competing with the Wrangler 392, but it's a really, really nice step down from a Wrangler 392, especially considering the comfort in the ride and the sharpness of the handling, which the Wrangler 392 quite simply cannot do. If that's what you're looking for, guys, you want a more drivable version of a Wrangler 392, you don't need it to get to zero to 60 in four seconds. You're more than happy getting there in five and a half to six. This 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor with the orange graphic appearance package and the carbon fiber interior package gives you just about everything you could possibly want or need outside of maybe the wind noise isolation. And a big thanks to Chris and the rest of the management and staff here at AutoNation Ford in Brooksville, Florida for help make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Brooksville or just West Florida area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and as for Chris. And a huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the content support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.